This is Twit. Well, the feature I want to talk about first is focus mode. So people who are familiar with Do Not Disturb already actually know what a focus mode is. Congratulations. It is essentially Do Not Disturb on steroids. So we had Do Not Disturb while driving that appeared a couple of iOSs ago. Um, and that you know, when you're driving, we'll send a message back and say, hey, I'm, I'm driving right now. If it's urgent, reply with urgent and it'll break through. Um, and then we got sleeping and sleep mode last year. Um, and that was a different kind of do not disturb. And this year, well, in Trapple Forum, they, they've amped it up a little bit. And instead of just having do not disturb sleep mode and do not disturb while driving, we have focus modes, which takes all of those options and it allows us to create our own ones as well. So for example, um, there's do not disturb still exists. Uh, there's driving and uh, there's sleep, there's work, personal. And of course, for me, I've added my own called podcasting. You'll see it's on right now. And if I pop into that one, then I can give you a little overview of podcasting, my personal um, little uh, focus mode. So I've got allowed notifications from three people, okay? Because I podcast with three different people. So I've got David Sparks, Micah Sargent, and Scotty Jackson in here. Um, and I can also allow calls from my favorites. And these are the favorites saved um, in the favorites uh, section of the phone app on iPhone. I can also explicitly allow certain applications and here I've chosen to allow uh, messages in Zoom because uh, obviously I use Zoom to record podcasts most of the time and uh, that that's you know what I needed there. But what you can do as well as allowing certain people and certain apps to get in touch with you is you can have multiple different home screens on your device. Okay, so if I swipe up from the bottom, this of course is the iPad. Uh, I had a little uh, accident with my phone before the show and it's currently trying to install an update slash restore my phone. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> I'll fix that later. Um, so of course, I'm not using the device that I've actually got the separate home screen set up on. But you can see I've got a lot of home screens here. And if I wanted to just use this home screen right here, while I'm podcasting, then back in settings under lock screen, sorry, not under lock screen, under home screen, I can choose custom pages. And when I enable this and I choose a page and I tap done, then I can just see these pages here. And then when I go back, look, there, there's just an app library and a notification center. And that's it. All of my other home screens have vanished. Um, and this is great, um, especially because like day to day, I might not want to see this home screen at all. Um, and you can um, add more home screens and so on when, when you're not in a focus mode um, to, to you know, allow that. So you can create multiple, multiple different home screens and you can swap them. Um, of course, there's a whole bunch of automation possibilities in here. I'm actually going to save that for Shortcuts Corner because I know a lot of people are going to be very excited about the automation options that they can do with focus modes. But what I really like here is the share across devices. And Micah, for me, this has been a game changer. I don't know how many times I have left my iPad or uh, one of my iPads. I have an iPad mini and an iPad Pro in the other room. I've gone to bed and I'm lying there and I can hear ding, ding, <laughs> ding of messages coming through because I was using that device before bed. And so I turned off silent mode and so on because I wanted to hear the notifications while I was using it. And then I forgot to turn it off and it didn't go into do not disturb automatically. Maybe it wasn't do not disturb. And I took it out because I was missing messages from people as sometimes happens. And oh my gosh, is that the most frustrating thing on the planet? Well, this sync or share across devices feature for focus modes has completely and utterly fixed that problem for me because I go to bed and what I do, I've got a little NFC tag by my bed. Um, so for people who aren't sure NFC tags, they're a special kind of sticker or a plastic chip. And I'm going to try and hold one up here so that you can kind of see uh, if you're watching the video stream. It's it's a sticker with, um, you know, lines and some, you know, it's a chip inside of it, basically. It's easier to see it through the back, I think, um, where um, your phone can read it. And all your phone does with shortcuts is it reads the idea of, of the tag. There doesn't need to be any data on it whatsoever. Um, but I have one by my bed and I just tap my phone on it and put my phone on the charger. Um, and when I tap my phone on it, it sets my phone into sleep mode. It checks to make sure if I've got any early meetings the next day, it can modify an alarm and so on and so forth. But by putting my phone in sleep mode, that tells my other iPads, that tells my Mac running Mac OS Monterey, because I've got a Mac running Mac OS Monterey, not this one, because I didn't want you or anyone in the studio to want to kill me today. Um, <laughs> but it puts, puts everything in sleep mode. And that actually triggers further automations, which makes other things happen as well. But 
the brilliance of this is it does mean that I go to bed and I tap my phone on this tag and all of my devices go into sleep mode and that's it. So there is no dings and bings coming from another room and I'm having to get up and wander around, especially in the winter. It's a little bit chilly. Don't necessarily want to be doing that, but this is great. Um, the other thing, of course, is it's on watchOS as well. It's it's going to be really hard to demo this, so I'm, I'm not going to. But if you swipe up into the control center on watchOS, um, then you can actually set your focus mode from right here. Um, and I'll, I'll pull it off my wrist and see if I can show people on the screen. I'm going to have to re-input my passcode a second um, to uh, make that happen. Um, but there we go. If I scroll down to the bottom, oh, where did the camera go? There it is. You can just about see a headphone icon there. Um, next to the walkie-talkie option, and that is my focus mode. It's actually purple in real life. It's it's not the blue. It's showing up as on camera, but that matches the color and the icon that I set up on my iPad when I created this focus mode. And uh, you know, it works. Um, and I can just select my focus mode right here, and it syncs to all my devices. And I've been experimenting on and off um, over um, the last couple of months with lots of different focus modes. Um, so one that I have been experimenting with is a cooking focus mode. Now, in the end, I've ended up not using this because I don't want to stop getting notifications while I'm cooking. All I was doing there was basically triggering a specific watch face, uh, which wasn't a great use of a focus mode because there are a limited number of focus modes that you can create. Um, but it's it's really good. I am just going to show people very quickly how they can enable a focus mode in Control Center, because if you swipe down from the top right, the, the Control Center has has changed up a little bit with iOS 15. Um, and where the Do Not Disturb was now, if you tap and hold on that, then you'll see all of your focus modes. Um, and you can also tap here to create a new focus mode and jump straight into that area in the settings uh, as well. But if you tap and hold, um, then you can, you can choose your focus modes. And if you tap on the three dots to the side, then you can also choose to enable it for a specific period of time, for an hour, until this evening, until you leave your location, or until the end of the event. And there are settings as well, because I did forget to mention, you can schedule focus modes. So there's a smart activation feature where it can automatically detect, okay, this is the kind of places that you physically go to when you usually enable this focus mode, um, or you're usually opening these apps at this kind of time of day, or it can just straight up do it um, at different times on, on, on specific days of the week. Um, when you arrive at a particular location, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to cancel it out of there because that's, uh, there we go. Um, and it can also do it when you open specific applications, which is great. So if you want a reading focus mode, then you could say when I open the books app and also if I scroll down and look for the Kindle app, which should be down here, then both of those can enable, in this case, it would enable my podcasting one. So it's not a great idea, um, but you know, the, you get the idea and you can also disable these. So while I was on holiday, um, and I was taking a break, I went in and I disabled this turn on automatically for my work focus mode. And then when I came back, I just toggled it back on and that was it. And I'm, I'm back, you know, with automated focus modes, which I love. Um, and this is working, you know, really nice, well for me. It's good. I specifically really like having the different home screens because then I swipe up on my, on my lock screen and look at my phone and, oh, wow okay, yeah, I'm supposed to be working. I'm not supposed to be checking Discord or, you know, browsing Reddit or whatever. There's a mail and Outlook there that I need to respond to or something like that. <laughs> um, and and so it's it's really useful from that perspective because it does just help you do a little bit of a mind shift uh, for people who try to, um, you know, focus on specific areas. And so I'm going to do this kind of thing and I'm going to do this kind of thing. Like if you're a college student, you might have a in-class uh, focus mode versus a studying focus mode versus a, um, you know, like casual study mode. And the casual study mode could allow notifications through, through friends uh, from friends and so on, whereas your regular study mode doesn't. Um, and then your in-class one might have, I don't know, different apps so that you can easily access the in-class notes or something. Um, but um, it, it, I really like focus modes. They are brilliant. If you haven't gone and set them up, Work and personal are there. And uh, what you do, you just tap on it. I've left for personal not set up for the entire summer so that I would have this, uh, Micah. Um, so you can just tap on it oh, to set it awesome. up. So I'll just do that again. 
tap next, and then you can choose. It's got some people here who I can say um, that I want to get uh, messages or notifications from. I can also just tap and remove all. I don't want notifications from anyone. I want calls from everyone, no one, my favorites, oh, no. all my contacts, or even specific groups. So if you have a group of your work contacts, then you can allow that group through automatically instead of going through and selecting everybody in your phone address book from work. Um, and you can also enable repeated calls, which is great. I really like that feature. Um, and then you choose um, which applications you get notifications from. And you can also choose whether or not to allow time sensitive notifications. Time sensitive are things like, for example, if a flood is detected in your home kit home and you've got a flood sensor, that will break through, as will things like locks unlocking or locking and things like that. But something like, hey, you got an email from Amazon um, about a sale is not going to come through. That's not time sensitive. Um, and so, you know, that that's good. And developers have been updating to support all of this as well. Um, and then when it's done, uh, it's right there. And I should say, um, if you have, and I'll just pop into the podcasting mode, um, lock screen options you can choose to dim on the lock screen and show on the lock screen and then i've dimmed my lock screen here and you can just see under the time there's a little icon there with some headphones um and apparently maddie has a mood going on today which is very entertaining as always so i probably need to disable discord notifications while mm -hmm. i am uh it doing this but hey that's you know it's all about tweaking things and basically do not disturb went on steroids and we have focus modes now and they're great. Um, there is something I should mention, which is that your focus state can be shared with applications. So for example, Micah, when I message you and I know it's late at night, I actually see Micah has focus turned on in the messages yes. and I can tap to notify you anyway. Now, personally, I don't tap this because I'm there going, Mike is sleeping. I'm just sending him a show idea and the show's not until Tuesday anyway. And it's like, I don't know, Wednesday. Um, so we've got plenty of time. I don't need to wake him up for this. Um, but you can toggle share focus status off and then it won't share it in things. Um, and also if you go back, um, uh, if you just have a play around with all of this, then, then you'll find you know, whether or not this is useful to you um, and, and so on. You might want to enable it for some things, but not others. Uh, so for example, for podcasting, I definitely don't want that enabled. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but um, for other things, like for example, if I am, I don't know, um, if I set up an exercise one, then I might say, actually, yeah, I want to share this because if something's important, then people should be able to interrupt me anyway. Um, but I really do love that it syncs between all my devices. This was such like that for me was the killer part of focus modes. It syncs between my devices. I set it on one and it's everywhere. So I've got a, a couple of things to say um, about focus modes and then we'll take a quick break. Um, because here's the the sort of ironic thing about focus modes is that uh, so I uh, back in college um, I, I've talked about it before I was diagnosed with ADHD and focus modes is one of those things that would be incredibly helpful uh, as a person with ADHD but the sort of the the understanding that we have for ADHD is that um, a lot of the time um, the executive dysfunction that happens happens because uh, the person with ADHD, the, the task that they're supposed to be focusing on is one that is not interesting to them. It is, it's uh, a struggle to, to sort of find interest in a specific task and be able to use that to sort of uh, complete that task. And so for me, while I know that focus modes would be helpful the thought of going through the process to set them up is for me not an engaging thing and so given that it is like it would it would take a lot of work to want to sit down and get this set up but i know that once i did i would be very pleased about it it, it would be very helpful for me so i kind of wish that there was a way to share focus modes that you know as somebody who's created a really good focus mode you could go oh yeah that is that's precisely what i want and on the other hand, I want Siri intelligence to continue to improve so that the suggestions get better to a point that they are kind of a full featured suggestion for what your focus mode could be. Because I think that 
even the suggestions that are available right now, um, while they are a good sort of jumping off point, it's not quite what someone would want where it's just sort of a, yeah, let's go ahead and enable this. And so uh, the focus modes that I use are do not disturb and sleep. And I still have personal and work uh, just kind of sitting there um, waiting to be set up because I just haven't gotten gotten um, the activation energy uh, to use a chemical um, the chemical term. I haven't gotten the activation yeah. energy required to set it up. So um, I wish that I could tap into yours and Matthew's um, yours and Matthew's uh, interest in this just like for a, just for a little bit of time because you know th- there are people with ADHD who wouldn't have trouble setting this up because for them this is an engaging activity this is something that is of interest to them uh, and it yep. just happens to fall outside of mine and so it's like oh man it feels like <laughs> such a grueling task but oh boy yep. it would be really nice to have it so yeah 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 I I apparently also have ADHD but yes this was something that really grabbed my attention I went yes I can do this and then I spend so much time tweaking things uh, there is one tiny bug that seems to have made it through to the release candidate that everybody got yesterday that I should mention. And that is calls from no caller ID will not break through a focus mode. Um, And that can be problematic for a lot of people. You probably have that turned off anyway. If that's the case, don't worry about it. It doesn't apply to you. But if you are somebody like me, whose doctor's surgery calls out using no caller ID, you may miss phone calls if you're using a focus mode. So I would uh, just suggest uh, if you experience this, please file feedback with Apple because if they don't know about it, they can't fix it. I have filed feedback on this. So hopefully it's going to get fixed in the not too distant future. Um, but if you are expecting a phone call from a number that comes through as or from a place that sent calls out with no call or ID, then you may want to disable your focus mode until you've received that phone call and then re-enable it afterwards. Um, just because otherwise you could miss something important like a doctor's appointment, which would not be great. 